Hey guys, this is Jeremy with uh, another underwater gear, photo gear review. This is the Nauticam NA7D, and it is Nauticam's housing for the Canon 7D, hence by the name. Um, it's a fantastic housing. I think it's, I think it's excellent um, for what it does, and it's ergonomically astounding. <laughs> They've done a fantastic job, uh, I think, with the fit and finish and every sort of aspect of the, of the housing. Um, if you want to look at sort of what they've done, to give you an example, they have taken some of the functionality that is uh, accessible on the back of the camera. Normally there's a lot of buttons on the back of these DSLRs and for instance, the button which uh, will change the camera from stills to video mode uh, on the 7D exists right about here. Um, if you put the camera in the housing, then it would be right about here. But in their infinite wisdom, not a cam, decided to move that uh, button to right here. So when you're underwater, you don't want to have to fiddle with a lot of stuff. and your hands are always going to want to be right here. So taking this hand, this right hand, and moving it to the back of the, of the housing to access some of the buttons is, is really annoying. Um, you want to have all the functionality at your fingertips, which is why they put a lot of these buttons right here. Um, so uh, I can change the video and still mode if I want to right there. That's how I do it, if you do it with your thumb. The shutter action is really smooth, it feels great on the hands. Um, you can depress it halfway uh, to, get, to get the focus and lock. And, uh, and then below that you have your shutter. This will change your shutter speed. And then this will change your aperture which accesses the big wheel on the back of the, the DSLR. For those of you who are familiar with the 7D. Um, Another nice feature that they have is that they have these piano keys right here. When you are viewing your photos underwater um, and you want to check that something's taken in focus, then you can zoom in using these keys. Um, and then this is your set button, so it'll, it'll set certain settings. So if you have to change something underwater, having the set button is really nice. One thing is, is these uh, metallic buttons right here are not that great. Um, they're really kind of tough to push. Um, there's a lot of tension on these, on the springs that push these things out. So they're kind of hard to push. I try not to use them that much underwater. I try not to view my photos too much underwater um, unless I'm really trying to go for some shot and I want to make sure something is in focus. I'll zoom in on it um, and on the subject and make sure that I got in focus, and then if I didn't get in focus, I'll retake the shot. Um, but that's only if it's a nude break or something that's really slow moving. If it's a fast moving fish or something like that, it's you, you can't retake the shot. The fish is gone. Um, really, with with fast moving subjects, you have to you have to get the subject uh, nailed in focus on the first shot, or else he's gone. So. Uh, so typically I don't really use this that much, but it is it is kind of tough. On the, the newer housings, they have a they have a better system. It's a little bit softer. Um, over here, this accesses all these buttons over here. Uh, these are nicely laid out. There's not much to say about it, except that uh, even when you're wearing gloves, they're easily accessible. Um, one really cool thing uh, that I really like about this housing, and it's like these little details that make the difference is that the off and on switch um, is, is well designed. And the reason that I say that is because a lot of uh, buttons that, uh, that are on these housings and a lot of settings that are on these housings have to match up um, with the buttons that are on the back of the camera, obviously. So, so for instance, if I put the camera, if I turn the camera on, and I put it in the housing, and I close the housing up, um, but I close the housing on with the off button on, the camera's on, 
but the off button is on here. So they're mismatched. Um, but not a can being the smart engineers they are, um, it doesn't matter. This, this can still catch the button. And so, for instance, if you do it in the inverse way, if you put the camera uh, into the housing and close it up and it's off and then you go diving and this says on and so they're, they're mismatched again, you can flip it to off, it'll catch the button, then you can turn it back to on. Uh, that's something that's probably saved, you know, my dive a few times, and that's it's a really nice, nice little feature. The same thing goes for the uh, the video feature. So if if the interfaces between the button and the housing are mismatched, then again it will match it up. Um, I really appreciate that fact. <laughs> uh, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that fact. Um, this is a knob that I don't really use that often. This is a focus knob. Um, I don't use it that often because I use autofocus a lot. Uh, with nature shots, things are moving really fast and uh, I don't like to use manu manual focus. A lot of guys do like to use manual focus, but I just, I just never got around to using it. Um, with wider lenses, for instance, the Tokina 10 to 17, which is what is being used to uh, make this video, um, this knob is used uh, as a zoom because it's a zoom between 10 millimeters and 17 millimeters um, and it's it's a very smooth function and it's also easily accessible um, so just to reiterate I mean it's I think it's a, a fantastically ergonomic system that they built um, and you know it's just really easy to use and it hasn't broken down on me in over 200 dives um, I've never had any problems with it. I really, really haven't. One thing that I also like are these latches. These latches really engender a lot of confidence. Uh, they're big, giant steel latches. The latches have changed quite a bit uh, since this housing. This housing was built in 2010. Um, and this is the first version of their Nauticam housing. The next version that they have has different latches than, than this. Um, and that's the, the, the version that if you bought it new, you would get. Um, it has little buttons that you have to push right below this latch right here. You have to push before you can lift it up and then uh, take off the housing. So I think that this still works fine. I don't really have a problem. I've never had a latch come, come undone underwater. If a latch did pop open underwater, uh, it still wouldn't be a problem because I still can't take this housing apart because I still have two other latches, one right here and one right here, that have locked the, the housing in place. Now if I popped open another latch, um, then, the, then the housing would come open and my camera would be flooded. Uh, I've never flooded this housing and I do not plan to. They say that you will flood a housing, um, knock on wood, I haven't yet. Uh, Next on the list are the sink ports. These go right here. And these are your optical sink ports, which you would use with a sink cable. Um, it's, it's a great system. Um, I really, really like the, uh, the ease of use. And you know, if you, know, you want to take off um, a sink cable underwater, it's really easy to. There's not really much of a reason for you to take off a sink cable, but if it's, you know, if you put it on in a way that you don't like or, or you, you need to, to move it around your, uh, your control arms, then perhaps you need to take it off. But what's great about it is that you can take it off underwater and, you know, you can let water come into here and you can let water touch this um, and, you know, you're not going to ruin anything. Now that is a benefit over something like the Nikonos 5-pin, which is an electronic connection and which requires another O-ring and uh, a dry connection. If there's salt water that gets into that Nikonos 5-pin, then it's going to be ruined. Um, you can do uh, the electronic connection through the Nikonos. This is the bulkhead that would allow you to do that. Um, I don't use that. So it's something about the price. The price is uh, kind of expensive. It's $3,200 for this brand new um, 
and it is kind of an older body style of camera than the, the 7D at this point in time. Uh, I'm sure they're going to come out with a replacement for it soon. You know, these, these bodies, these digital SLR bodies only have a lifetime of, say, you know, th three or four years. Um, the 5D Mark II was only around until its replacement came out for about four years. So, um, that's something to keep in mind. I mean, the thing that's, that's difficult is that these are expensive housings and it's an expensive hobby and these DSLRs just don't last. I mean, you can still use the same DSLR for years and years and years and you'll be happy, but uh, there's this weird thing about always upgrading to the latest. And it's unfortunate because the resale value of the DSLRs goes down quite a bit. And even though these housings are fantastically made and there are mechanical wonders, uh, like a Swiss watch, their value also goes down um, quite substantially because, because they become obsolete. This housing cannot be used with any other camera body. Um, and that's, that's kind of frustrating. I mean, I wish I could put another one in. I wish I could buy the latest you know, 5D Mark III and put it in here. Um, but I just can't uh, because it's designed around the Canon 7D body.